Hi, meteorologist John Dawson. This is the Fox 26 YouTube tropical update. Thanks for tracking us down and clicking so that we can get a lot of time here to really talk about what's happening in the tropics. And most of our discussions are actually going to be what's happening right in the Gulf of Mexico. And of course, we're located here in Houston. Uh, we'll try to keep this uh, focused uh, on what's happening for the Gulf and Houston. And we'll also touch a little bit what's happening in the bigger picture as well as for the Atlantic. So we've been watching this area of low pressure. It's fairly broad in circulation. It's not meeting all of the characteristics necessary to form a tropical cyclone as defined by the National Hurricane Center. And so they've been calling this. You might have heard the term an invest or this is invest 95 L. And so just a quick little update on why that is and what that would be in case you were wondering is that invest is sort of short for an invest investigation or an area of investigation. And once they formally identify a spot like that, they can then kind of start running some of the computer models on it and kind of beginning to get an idea of what this would do if it were to develop into something. So it doesn't necessarily mean for sure that it's going to develop into something, but it just sort of gives them what they need as far as getting things moving for further investigation into this particular area. So they use a numbering system and if it has an L on the end, that means the Atlantic. And so when you see that 95, they just keep it's it's 90 all the way up to 99 and they just kind of rotate back through again. We just happen to be on the number 95 right now. So that's all a little bit of history on why this low pressure is being called invest 95 L by the National Hurricane Center. And with that, we then have those computer models that are run on it. So the computer models really are intended for an actual tropical system. So this is just sort of to give us an idea of what's happening, but certainly beginning to look a little bit more organized on what this is going to do. Uh, and and, you know, we'll have Houston right here, Corpus Christi a little further down, Matagorda Bay. It looks like most of our modeling is taking this making a landfall, if you will call it that, between Matagorda Bay and Corpus Christi, continuing to push all that moisture up over on the east side. That's where most of the rain will take place. So no matter what, whether it becomes tropical officially or it stays just a low pressure system, we will see rain in the Houston area on Thursday and Friday generated from this particular low pressure. And it'll be beneficial rain for the most part. I think the forecasts on what we're putting out are very manageable. Four to seven inches is on the higher end of things over a two day period. So some low lying areas and maybe some short term street flooding in those spots that always kind of get a little bit when that heavy rain comes down. But overall, we're not looking for any widespread problems as this system as this disturbed weather continues to kind of move towards the coast and begins to move a little bit further inland. You can see all that moisture kind of getting wrapped in behind that a little bit more. And it's one of those scenarios where because it's less organized, because it's less defined, it's a little bit harder to pinpoint exactly what we're going to do. And you don't always have to have a tropical cyclone, a depression or a storm to get a lot of rain. You can still have quite a bit of rain if it even is less organized. It will have less winds with this system because it's not a tropical storm, but it still could uh, develop into that tropical cyclone officially. And the National Hurricane Center, again, continuing to keep an eye on this area, and they're going to keep it at 40% right now. This is as of 4 p.m. on Wednesday, we're sticking or they're sticking with the 40% chance that somewhere in here it could develop. So at this point, it would be practically last minute that it would turn into a depression, get that final bit of organization. During the day on Wednesday, they did fly the hurricane hunters out there and pretty much they found what was found by the satellites and just that there's not really a good locked in closed level of circulation. They got a little bit of better idea of what the winds were doing for sure. So we're kind of keeping an eye on that list of names a little bit because we still have the potential tropical cyclone two that's further in Atlantic. We're going to look at that in a minute and it, it which is what you think would get the next name. But if it keeps kind of stalling around and at the last minute, if this 
uh, Invest 95L kind of flares up and gets organized, it might actually end up with the name Bonnie first. So fortunately, it's not a contest. We got plenty of names on the list. We're not excited about moving through them, but we might have a couple more checked off here in the next day or so. And again, that would really be dependent on what happens here with potential tropical cyclone two and you know that final development that'd be taking place with the invest area that's in the Gulf. So here's the latest. Uh, once again, this is 4 p.m. They, it does have winds fairly sustained at around 40 miles an hour and it's moving pretty quick at 21 miles an hour. So you could tell it's already into the Caribbean now staying very low. And it looks like at this point that this could be one of those crossover storms where it starts in the Atlantic, maintains all of its character, tropical characteristics and comes out into the Pacific. And then even in this case, perhaps strengthening into a hurricane. So this is one of those scenarios where it's, you know, it's completely up to the National Hurricane Center on how they want to track it and identify it. If a system is able to maintain all of its tropical characteristics as it crosses land and it didn't completely fall apart and become remnants and then those remnants fire back up again, it will keep the same name. So there's a good chance that if let's just say if this one becomes Bonnie, uh, it would keep its name Bonnie as it moves into the Pacific. That's what it looks like right now that it would be able it's crossing over one of the narrower portions of Central America there and that's going to be able to maintain all those tropical characteristics from 70 mile an hour winds they'll fall down to 40 mile an hour as they cross over but this could be a potential crossover storm as it starts in one ocean it ends up in the other in this case the Atlantic over into the Pacific and again, I don't know the name of it yet. We would think logically that maybe it would be called Bonnie, but not guaranteed because again, that invest area might kind of flare up at the last minute. So hope you're following me on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. If you're not, here's an official invitation for you. I'm hoping to get a few more Instagram followers, to be honest, and it'd be great if you wanted to punch up at John Dawson Fox 26, we could connect. Maybe you're looking for some ideas for hurricane preparedness. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, information there, and of course, we'll continue to keep you updated. Don't forget to also download the Fox 26 weather app. That'll be also part of your hurricane plans, and you'll make sure that you're ready for whatever the rest of this hurricane season will bring us. We'll be back again tomorrow right after 4 p.m. with another update on the tropics.